I get a lot of people saying, um, I, I completely take inspiration from and agree with your message, you know, that, that our response to struggle is, is, is much more consequential than the struggle itself, the response to the events that befall us, the, the, the maladies that come our way. But a lot of them ask like, you know, how do you, how do you find that sweet spot um, where you're not engaging in a life of delusion and denial and where you're taking an appropriate measure of time to grieve what's been lost, um, you know, to, uh, um, um, to, to accept a new altered and not preferable reality. How do you balance that with the fact that the only way to live the rest of your life is to, is to look for the silver lining and to look ahead? Um, and a lot of questions boil down to that, which has really just stuck with me because as I said, I think that is the challenge of being human, the challenge of being alive, the challenge of aging. But then there have been discrete moments. The book hadn't been out a couple of days. I got a beautiful email from a woman who had found her way to it, had read it. Um, and she was saying the thing that she's struggling with and trying to get past was her son's suicide. Um, and she just couldn't stop um, feeling responsible. She couldn't stop feeling like she'd miss things. She couldn't, she couldn't quit the sense that for her to move on and enjoy her life was a betrayal of his memory. Um, and we got into an exchange about it because I don't know what kind of human being, I mean, unless you truly don't have the physical ability to respond, doesn't respond to that. Um, and that one just sticks with me because that's a kind of intense, intimate reaction you get you don't get to a lot of journalism, but I've but I've gotten um, emails like that, not exactly like that one, but of that sort of tenor and pitch because of this book.